Hey, Innocent Fam, it's your favorite Gypsy Naya here um, for an Innocent Report um, because I saw something very profound um, last night, like early this morning. I saw something very profound. Um, so we're going to get right into it um, right here with the six laws of innocence. I am doing what I am aware is righteous, balanced, and fair. I am reacting with the intentions of serving everyone's highest good. I am being honest with myself and everyone else. I am standing in my power without manipulating anyone out of theirs. I will expand whenever I receive proper knowledge. I will always acknowledge the most high God with a heart of submission. Okay. All right. Um, make sure you get you a recovery record. Okay. Make sure you get yourself um, a manifestation journal from the innocent faith. Um, make sure you like and comment and subscribe. Um, on the bottom of this deck, I have deceit. Guys, we got to talk about this, okay? Somebody could be, this is devil energy. Somebody could be kind of obsessed and deceptive on their channel, um, being manipulative or possibly jealous. So what I saw that was very distinctive um, in my dream, there is either a young lady, a young tarot reader, or she she might not be young she could be older i don't know um her energy and what i saw her her energy in the revelation was being cloaked by looking like the little mermaid <laughs> so that's why i said young i saw like an aerial little mermaid looking soul you know looking looking person and she was copying me but she wasn't stealing from me. Um, she wasn't stealing from me. She was like um, just copying, like purposely trying to resonate, almost trying to um, read with me. In the dream, she was trying to read with me or for me. It's like she wanted me to see her. Angel of balance. Oh my gosh. I said the little mermaid and this is what she looked like. This is how you're wh whoever this is. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> like temperance. Angel of balance. If somebody is copying you or watching you, the number 48 could be significant. This is what they look like in the dream. And I said, the little mermaid, this is what they look like, guys. But very, very, and she was holding something like a cup. She had tarot cards. See, that says water. It's showing water, but she had tarot cards in her hand. Thank you. Thank you, God, for that. Because y'all seen that fly out. And she's like a young looking lady with red hair. And that's what I saw in my dream. Wow. Okay. So that's, that, that, that's a good start for confirmation. Um, so you might not look like the little mermaid actually, but you might be trying to, um, copy other people's energy or someone, whoever, whoever this resonates for, someone's trying to copy your energy in the dream. It's like, she wasn't stealing from me like she wasn't like trying to steal my readings or nothing but it's like she was constantly like purposely trying to resonate like so every time it's like okay we were doing readings for people um and then every time um i would do a reading for somebody you know she would do also a reading for somebody but she would she would hear what i say in my reading and then would like spin off of my reading for her people. Okay. So maybe it's, uh, somebody with a YouTube channel, somebody with their own collective, which is beautiful. That's good. But she was an admiration of like, look at how this young lady is admiring this cup of water. It's like, she was an admiration of what I was doing, but her gifts were different. And the dream is like, she was admiring like that. I was bigger than her. But what I got from that, like in the dream, I was really, really like stocky and strong. So that represents to me, I interpret that as bravery. Somebody um, is just really, really encouraged by your bravery and by your outspokenness. And um, 
maybe, you know, they're, they're a little more cloaked. Maybe they're a little more reserved. Um, the calling, their anointing, the calling on their life requires them to be a little bit more cloaked and reserved. Whereas the calling on your life requires you to be bold and, and brave um, because your assignments and your gifts are different. In the dream, she had a lot of like esoteric knowledge as to planetary alignments and how that affects us on, um, on earth in the carnal realm. And I didn't have that knowledge. And I kept telling her in the dream to use her esoteric knowledge. It was like, she could also sing. So whoever this is, um, they could be, they could be copying my energy. Who knows? And, um, or trying to resonate with me and, or, or you, whoever, the, whoever this is for, they're trying to resonate with you and they can sing. They had a beautiful, in the dream, Ariel, you know, Little Mermaid could sing. She had a beautiful voice. It also might represent um, a water sign, a Pisces. The Little Mermaid gives me Pisces energy. So this person might be a Pisces. Maybe they could sing and they read tarot, okay? Um, the thinking woman, yeah, they are a reader, okay? So this person is a reader. But then we have a woman holding a coin. Okay, so they are a tarot reader. And then it says happy family. They might feel like they're a part of your soul family. They might feel like y'all have a lot in common maybe. But she is a reader. She is watching. This is like queen of swords, queen of pentacles, um, queen of wands energy. She might be a queen of wands or a queen of pentacles. Um, this is really giving air sign, earth sign, fire sign, female that are a part of your soul tribe, possibly. Okay. But, and with the dream being the little mermaid, um, that's Pisces energy to me. Um, that's like water side energy to me, but she, she could be of all sides. Like this could resonate for you. You could be this thinking woman, this could, you know, take, take, take it as the roles exchange, please. Um, but she could sing beautifully and she had, um, she had spiritual understanding that I do not have. First of all, I can't sing. Okay. So somebody that can sing has the gift to be able to shift the atmosphere and, um, in any way that they, that they see fit, any way that they desire. Okay, having the gift and ability to sing is very, very powerful. And y'all so lucky I can't sing because, see, I refuse to be like my mom. My mom is somebody who can't sing and don't fucking know it. And I, 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 that drives me nuts. But um, I'm sorry. I'm trying to watch my mouth. But uh, I refuse for that to be me. I know I can't sing. But this, whoever this is that watches you um, and is maybe trying to copy your energy, or if this is you, if you resonate with this reading as the person trying to copy as the little mermaid, um, you had a, a beautiful gift and you could sing. And I was telling you to use your gifts and fall in love and add admiration. Um, and what's good about you. It's like your collective and the people that you was reading for, was all there waiting to hear like the planetary alignments. And it's like in the dream, you could look up at the stars and like your eyes started to glow and you could, like you was telling the people that you was doing readings for, you was telling them like, look, look at how the moon is going that way and look at the stars and ah. <laughs> and all of the beautiful I'm sorry, I said beautiful. I don't know what that means. Um, sorry, uh, all of the beautiful, magical, I was putting the words together, all of the beautiful, magical things that came with being you in your gifts, um, that's what you were supposed to be using. Um, I don't, I didn't possess any of that energy, but just like you were in admiration. It's like you wanted to resonate with me but I don't even have the gifts that you have. And that's what I kept saying in the dream. And then whenever you would do a reading for your collective 
In the dream, you would turn around and ask me, did you see it? Did, did you see it? What God kept showing me was that you, like, you wanted me to watch. You, like, like, you wanted confirmation. You wanted me to reassure you somehow that I saw your reading or something. And in the dream, I have yin yang, 22. Um, in the dream, in the dream, I, I didn't see it. Every time you would ask me, did you see it? Did you see it? Um, I never, I didn't see it or I didn't hear it or I missed your reading or something. So I might not be a part of your collective, but you might be a part of mine. What this is telling me is you have to balance your light with your dark. That's, that's what this is about. And you need to be, you need to be your own biggest fan. Your, your light and your dark blends together too. Like, okay. In the dream, it's like you were an admiration of my grounded nature, but your grounded nature is important too. Your grounded nature is beautiful too. You, okay. This card shows me like the earth and the water kind of. You, um, you have a good blend of light and dark as well. You don't have to, uh, you don't have to overly um, indulge in anyone else's. It's, it's like living vicariously through somebody else, kind of. Um, and then I just realized that the last last card I got is happy family number four and then 22. So that's four and four. And th that's the message. Like you don't have to, that's confirmation for me that that's the message. Your light and your dark blends together so beautifully and so well. Like you... You don't have to um, attempt to mimic anybody else's energy or spin off of anyone else's like readings in an attempt to resonate with certain soul family or you know certain readings. Um, it says man holding a heart. I'm 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 sorry. I'm getting I'm getting another download. Okay, we have man holding the heart here. Um it's like okay, the man holding a heart gives me king of cups energy. You might you might admire uh, uh you might admire people with emotional intelligence. And with a big heart, like with enough heart, you know, you might admire, you might admire my masculine energy, but for a lot of the readers, I admire your feminine energy, honestly. Like in, in the dream, it's like she was beautiful and, and dainty and um, she was very feminine. And I thought that that was beautiful and I admired it. But in the dream, it's like she was an admiration of my bold, honest strength. You know, some people, some people are honest enough to speak their truth and th they might try to cover it up by saying things like, um, uh, we all do it. That is one surefire phrase for somebody who is not, not really, um, comfortable owning up to that particular fact. You have to continue to balance your light and your dark and your masculine energy. Um, continue, continue working on your relationship with God and then you won't try to live vicariously through other people's. And it says financial constraints. This is the second time I've seen that. Financial constraints. Um, that can be blocking your abundance. That could be blocking a lot of love. It says man holding a heart and financial constraints. The fact that you don't appreciate your light and your dark and the way um, you might not appreciate your gifts as much as you appreciate and admire other people, that can block your abundance. That can cause financial constraint. Oh, and yes, that's a confirmation. This financial strength card has the number 13 on it. 
and I aligned it right up under this number four card. So we have another four, four here. So it's like, it's like under, a, it's like, okay, you need to be your own biggest fan because then you will attract an energy that's going to pay you for your energy and like appreciate you more. You need to be your own biggest fan in your collective. It says first chakra, Archangel Michael. All right, you need to um be passionate about producing. Be passionate about what you produce. Also, it says healer of the age at the bottom of the deck. Be passionate about what you produce and trust that the universe is working to protect you and your investment the same way the universe is working for other people to manifest and to protect their investments. Door to spirit. Archangel Michael, door to spirit. And adjacent possibilities. Both, both are representing doors, okay? We have adjacent possibilities and door to spirit. Archangel Michael is standing there guarding, is in, in guardian watch of other people's work. 1616, which is on the timer. Archangel Michael is attentively watching over other people's work and what other people produce. Same as yours. So you have to understand that spiritually people are going to be able to see you if you are hating, if you're in bad energy, because like, and that, that's why it'll block your abundance. Archangel Michael is in control. Archangel Michael is watching over us. Um, and you know, you want to be in alignment. You want to appreciate, um, I'm hearing the song by J. Cole, love yours, appreciate your work, appreciate your gifts. You know, I, I was never a person to really, really, um, look into deep astrology because I don't necessarily understand the planetary alignment. First of all, you got to get me to believe that all them planets exist. I'm a truth seeker. So I, I'm sorry, but um, if I don't have any way to get up there in space and verify whether that stuff is really, whether this planet is, is in Aquarius and this planet is in this house and moving into that, I would only receive that wisdom from hearsay, from what's being said on the internet, from watching, you know, NASA, different stuff, because I can't physically um, carnally verify it. I don't even get into it. I like carnal verifiers. There is a lot of false prophets and liars in this country and everywhere. There's a lot of false prophets and liars that will have you believe in anything for any reason. So I don't get into it because I don't understand it and I can't verify it. But that is not you. That is not your gift. You have a gift where somehow, some way you can see into that realm of the heavenlies. And I can't. <laughs> 1818, 18, just on the timer. I can't. You can sing. You can shift the atmosphere with your voice. I can't. So you have to understand that the same you know, the same doors, the same spiritual doors that are open for me to be productive with this first, with this first shack or Archangel Michael, I'm protected and I'm productive, but them same doors are open to you. But yes, these doors are being guarded by, um, angels and spiritual beings. Okay. And they want you to love you. They want you to go through your own adjacent possibilities. They want you to take hold of your own. Um, you're the bomb is really what I keep getting. Like you're awesome. You know, maybe, maybe people don't give you your flowers. Don't nobody give me my flowers and I'll, and I will celebrate myself in a heartbeat. That's why God gave me a gift of celebration. Cause he knows my karmic, my, my karmic contract for me to be, um, reincarnated in this life came with a bunch of family that don't love me, don't care for me and the world. Yes. That's what I'm saying. For me to come into the world, I was going to be lonely. Look at that little lonely person. I was going to be lonely. For me to come into the world, for me to be reincarnated, I had to be alone and be with people who don't appreciate me. The world is dark. Look at how half of it is dark and half of it is, is in light, okay? 
I balanced my light and my dark and I graduated and I'm strong and I'm confident and bold and brave because what else am I going to be? And then it also says the world, the bottom of the deck, I've just flipped it over. It says door to value. It's another doorway. You have to gain this confidence and see, you can't graduate going through somebody else's door to value. You have to, you can only graduate through your own door to value. You are valuable for your own reason. It's what's inside of you that busts open these, these funds, that busts open this abundance and, you know, this celebration and everything that you might admire someone else for. And it says patience, okay? Patience is going to bring your own um, caring connections. Your patience and trusting in divine timing, okay? Divine intervention is going to bring this in for you as well. You might feel lonely. That's what I'm getting here too. You might feel lonely too. You might, you might have re reincarnated alone too. But divine intervention, divine intervention and having faith in your own value is what changes things for you, okay? All right, I'm going to leave that there. I don't know who this resonates with or for. I saw it in the dream and the God cloaked you as the little mermaid. And you are a powerful, it flipped over again in my hand. Caring connections. This person might be watching you. This caring connection might be watching you. You have to be yourself. You can't be trying to um, be in nobody else's energy. You have to be patient. You have caring connections that love you and love the way you read and want to give you your flowers. But it's not okay to be um, imitating or mimicking anyone else's energy. If you are quiet and soft-spoken and you can sing, and uh, you might be a Pisces, because I only said that because it was a little mermaid in my dream. But um, you might be a tarot reader. I might not be a part of your collective. I might have seen one or two of your readings, but I might not be a part of your collective. And if I'm supposed to be, I will be. Whoever, whoever this resonates for, wherever you fit at in this, the person who you want to see you might not be a part of your collective, but they will be if, if your readings um, are supposed to resonate with them. You can't force it. Angel, it says angel of love, but it fell out in reverse. Okay. You can't force it because love, love can easily be manipulated into um, jealousy. Um, admiration can be manipulated in a lot of toxic ways. And that's not what you want. You can't force resonance. You can't force the readings. You can't decide to watch everybody else's readings and then um, say, hey, I, I, I want to be their preacher. I want to be I want to be the person that they look up to. So let me let me try to. Um, it, it, I feel like if you if you want them to look up to you or to resonate with you, if, if that would help you to feel validation then comment on their stuff and give them their flowers. That's what I'm getting. Give them their flowers, comment on their stuff and give them their flowers. Don't be a hater. Angel love, angel of love in reverse. Don't, don't be a hater. Um, it says all, all tied up like the eight of swords, like a mental prison. If you want to give somebody advice, if you want to let somebody know that, hey, we're soul family, we resonate, then comment. That's that's what I do. I just comment. If God keeps putting you on my feed to watch and your, your titles resonate enough and God wants me to get your message and I think, you know, and, and I love your advice and I appreciate your energy, I'm going to like and share and subscribe. And I'm going to say so. That's the difference. Whoever, you know, that's the difference between me and Ariel. Whoever Ariel represents, that's the difference between me and you. That's the difference between me and Ariel. I am not afraid to give somebody their flowers out of love. The difference between me and you is that I will let you know that I'm watching, that I see you and I love you. Um, 
maybe you might be afraid that people are going to say, oh, you copying or something like you cannot be afraid. OK, there are 78 cards in a tarot deck, the same 78 for every tarot reader. We all read differently. We all use different tools. We all have different gifts. Cornucopia fell on the floor. Love yours. This fell on the floor because what I'm getting is don't be looking at somebody else's cornucopia, somebody else's um, spiritual abundance. Cornucopia is like spiritual and carnal abundance. Love yours. God gave you an abundance of gifts spiritually as well. But one thing about me, I'm gonna give I'm I'm gonna give honor to where I feel honor is due from me. Um and I don't try to copy anyone else's energy or be like anyone else but me. Um, because life is better that way. Um, the temple path fell on the floor in reverse. You have to you have to get on your path and stay in your lane so that you can manifest your cornucopia cornucopia fell on the floor and then temple path in reverse you're not on you're not on the path to your abundance if you are like purposely trying to ride i guess that would be called riding someone else's wave you have to heal that within yourself you might have come from a family that didn't validate you you might come from a family like mine 26 26 is on a timer you might, you, we might resonate in that way. And you, you might've might came from a family that gives everyone else applause, but you, and you might feel like you're playing Jane. You might feel like, um, you don't have a lot of pizzazz. Maybe I, that's what I just heard. Um, it might be the fact that you, you are afraid to really, really, uh, you might be afraid of transparency in this part of your life because people are watching and you don't want to be judged for your darkness. You don't want to be negatively judged, but that means you have to work on your relationship with God and judge yourself. I judge myself first. One thing about me, I don't get out here and tell anybody or show anybody anything that I haven't first came to like came to grips with and made peace with. Um cuz and in in the dream it's like you you, you, like you were asking about what's on my face. Like I was wearing like my normal makeup. I don't have any on today, but I was wearing my normal makeup in the dream. And it's like, you wanted me to like take it off or something like that. So you could like see what I use or how I put it on. Like you thought I was wearing some kind of costume, but no, I, that, that's really how I show up. Like that, that's really what I look like for real. Um, and the dream, yeah, I don't come out and be transparent about nothing I ain't sat down with God and dealt with yet. When I sit down and deal with it, that's when I'll go ahead and release it um, for, you know, because if, it, if I haven't dealt with it yet, I can't give anyone else the authority to deal with it. Once me and God have dealt with it, it's not, basically it's not safe. It's not healthy. It's not safe. If you and God haven't even dealt with it yet, you don't have no business allowing other people to put their hands in it and dealt and deal with it. Um, their opinions and their input should not matter enough that you would expose it to them before you expose it like to your own self. Th that's just not healthy. It it's just not. So I don't do it. I get out here. Yeah, I, I stop shuffling on the envy card. It's like. You have so much, but like you're looking, this lady is in, in her shadows, in her darkness, and like she's looking out at what looks to be um, a, a brighter side, like what, what, looks, what looks to be a better place or something that she finds more beautiful, but she has plenty. What she's holding is plenty. If you look at that picture, so it's not like jealousy and in and, and the dream she she was in the dream Ariel was admiring me. She wasn't like hating on me, but she envied something that I had when when you like whoever Ariel represents, this person was extra gifted. And I thought if if I OK, if I can say so myself, I think that the feminine energy 
the soft, sweet, feminine energy of Ariel in the dream was it was admirable and beautiful. The fact that she could sing and then during her reading, she would talk about, she would have the people look up at the stars and she would say, and that is going that way and doing that and that and this and that and that and this and ah. Like I thought it was beautiful. So I don't know. You can't be envying nobody else and their gift. Okay. I wish I could. I wish I was that asshole. Like I wish I understood <laughs> what's going on in the planets like that. What popped out at me? Four chakra, Archangel Raphael. Um, it popped out in reverse. Okay. Um, and then at the bottom of the deck, I had the thinking man. Um, your heart could be closed off because you're thinking like, okay, you're not showing your heart and then deceit. You might need to follow your heart a little bit more and speak your mind and speak your truth and get out of your head. I had the thinking man to deceit. Your heart is not, oh, wow. And I'm right. When I look at the, the uh, this deck, I'm, I'm pulling from the deck. When I look at it, it's like a heart. It's a heart with a lock um, inside of a cage. And then, yeah, Archangel Raphael, the heart chakra card came out in reverse. Then the thinking, man, you're, you're stuck in your head too much. You can't be worried about that. You're stuck in your head too much. And it's, it's um, opening the, like, the door for too much devil energy. You're being too judgmental of yourself. You got to give your heart your freedom. Set your heart free. Door to romance. Set your heart free. It's like you're admiring, and the dream is like you're admiring, and then a strength. Yeah, you are admiring my strength and my heart, but you have your own story. You just got to, you, you, you're going to have to get out of your head. And don't pass judgment on yourself. Like you and God have to work things out in your heart. Angel of strength. You and God got to work things out in your heart and you can't be trying to resonate with other people or trying to be some kind of spiritual advisor that the people who you look up to and who you admire, you admire the God in them with so much God in you. You have so much gifting and wisdom and talent in you. You're admiring the, the, the tough exterior and the strength of other people. When your vulnerability is beautiful, but but you're holding your vulnerability back. Like you're holding your story back. You're locking your heart up. Um, Don't do that. Live your truth. What have you worked out in your relationship with God? Speak. You don't have to be indirect. I used to tell my mom this all the time. You don't have to be passive and indirect. You can, you're allowed to say, hey, I struggle with this. You might resonate, collective. This was my issue. You don't got to be indirect with yourself and say stuff like, um, we've all done it. We've all been there. No, that's, no, listen. Because see, here's the thing. With a lot of things in life, I, there's a lot in life that I have not experienced. I've, exp I've lived a lot of life. And my 35 years of being here, I'm sorry, my 34 years of being here, I've lived a lot of life and I can resonate with a lot. There's also a lot of things that I cannot resonate with and that I haven't lived and I know nothing about. I've never been addicted to any kind of drugs. I don't smoke weed because my, my physical body can't tolerate it. I've never got a C-section. Um, it's, it's just a lot of stuff that we don't all go through. Sorry. I've never had an STD. I've been promiscuous before, I've, but I was too protected to have STDs. I, I, I've never experienced, I've never had a doctor tell me that you caught da-da-da-da-da from this. I've never been there. I don't know what that's like. So that's what I mean. It's like there's so many things that I cannot resonate with. I, I can't sing. Whoever you are, you can sing. There's so much in life that I can't resonate with. There's going to be a lot that you can't resonate with. So you don't have to be indirect with yourself and say, oh, we've all been there. We've all done it. To me, that is mask for I, I've been there, but I'm still kind of ashamed of it. Um, I, I've been there, but I'm having a hard time admitting it. 
And that's what you have to work out. You have to um, settle that within your heart. If you want to give your heart to your collective the way you see other readers give their heart and their self to their collective, it takes a lot of bravery and strength, yes, to be transparent. And you can be transparent too if that's the call on your ministry, on your platform. It's a part of my soul contract to be transparent. If you are in high priestess, high priest un anointing, if that's, the, if that's the call on your life right now, you are not supposed to be overly transparent. You are not supposed to let people see you too naked. You are supposed to be covered. High priests and high priestess are, are, are covered. That's how their spiritual protection works. My spiritual protection works when I come uncovered. So, and when I, like, when I choose to step out on that kind of faith, that's when my protection activates the most. Okay. Um, so, you know, I mean, love yours. Um, and that's what I want for the innocent fam. Um, that concludes the innocent report today. I just want to remind everybody to love yours. Okay. All right. Love you, innocent fam.